I'm Grace Vandenberg. Today we're going to start with baby steps, the very important baby steps. Today's advice will be starting off with the basics, and soon I'll provide a more in-depth update on the exact same topic. Don't worry. How to build an author platform. Before you even start writing, it'll pay you to remember that the most important marketing tool is an author platform, one that you can use without a third person involved and often for free. Old school publishing is a thing of the past. It's not about come and go as and when you have a public event. Today is all about share and share alike, constant exposure. But exposure you can control before it takes control of you. A happy balance. Step one. Start now, today. Open that social media account. YouTube, Spotify, website. Building a platform is building an audience, and ultimately, it's a game of patience. There's a lot of people in the world, and it takes a time and constant effort to build. Well, anything. Being an author is no exception to the rule. Even if you haven't started your book yet, or you have and you have no idea when you'll be completed, because of how long it takes for people to find that you're out there in the world, it will take a long time for people to sample the flavor you're offering, and for them to decide if they like it or not. And if they invest in you for the long haul, so you must be the gift that keeps on giving. Perhaps you'll struggle for content until you get in the swing of things. That's natural. Photography, it is in your strong suit. Don't like to take daily, weekly, or regular photos of yourself. It's too much for to look picture perfect all the time. Okay. I get that. Arguably, if anyone wishes to be successful in this modern world, it's what it takes. Share the places you're going, giving a quick synopsis of your day. Practice writing and feeling comfortable sharing slogans and descriptions in the style you write your books. This will ultimately help with confidence and your comfort in the public domain. Share what you're eating. While you're shopping, family trips. That doesn't mean you must share constant pictures of your family or children if you're not comfortable with that. Not why there's sun, sea, fog, snow, and fun out there to be captured. Alternatively, start a book review. Review all the books you've already read in your life, so there's no pressure getting through 300 pages a week. Or alternatively, start a movie review. Let people know your favorites and find common ground with those who share your tastes. The possibilities are endless. Step two: Which platforms? Twitter. Well, right now more than ever, that's very personal choice. Instagram is great for authors, publishers, literary agents, even movie producers alike. TikTok. Well, TikTok right now is blowing it out of the water. Facebook, it has a decreasing membership, and it lost me a long time ago. If you already have an account, you say, perhaps think about creating one that's only for your work. YouTube, the benefits of YouTube is that it's very personal, and people can get a real sense of who you are, and can help in turn create a long-lasting, meaningful relationship with fans and those who ultimately can become friends. They will be the ones who will grow with you throughout your career, and get excited with each project. A game which is a very personal thing that connects you with them and them with you. It comes with needing to learn how to use technology and software. Though it's not rocket science, it can be tedious until you get the hang of it. I frequently found it very frustrating. You'll need a little equipment. A good phone will fit you just fine content, or you can get a camera, which might mean you'll need a tripod. But then again, you might need one for your phone anyhow, or a very tall stack of books. 
software to edit and export videos, music download if you really want to fan things up a notch. If you're shy, thus intimidated, I know it can be uncomfortable to get into the swing of seeing yourself on camera, hearing your own voice resound. But try hard not to overthink it. You'll only hold yourself back. I know I did from time to time. But on the plus side, it's great practice for when you'll have to get out there and promote your masterpiece. You'll likely have to meet members of the public then anyhow, potentially participate in conversation with other authors at festivals. Then there could be radio, TV interviews, podcasts, interviews speaking with journalists for magazine and newspaper features. That all takes confidence and the ability to suppress pressure and nerves. Maybe one day you'll be so successful you'll deliver keynote speeches. That's when you'll need to have to bring your A-game. Until you develop your confidence and find your footing and wording, aiding in great practice. Until then, start a blog. People will get a sample of your writing style, but you won't feel intimidated with a camera in your face. It can be hard, however, to grow a blog these days, since blogs took over. But if you do it in conjunction with other social media, it could over time, again consistency is key, be a good experience. But very much a stepping stone, and stepping stones are only ever life's greatest lessons preparing you for the next stage. Step 3. Connect with others. Join a community. Let people know that you exist. Over time, you'll develop friendships and a place you can learn. More stepping stones and avenues from more experienced people. Again, education, constant education, learning from others. Overall, you'll be building your network, and networking is everything in business. Plus, you'll be less isolated. Writing can be isolating and lonely, though I don't get affected by this personally. I'm content in my own little happy world, but some people need to be around people more often than I do. It's all personal choice. There's no right or wrong. Step 4. How can people find your platform? Hashtagging is every inspiring and seasoned entrepreneur's friend. Which brings me to a crucial point. It blows my mind just how many people who start out writing books that don't view what they do as a business. Writing books is a business as it involves sales, entice, marketing and promotional seduction. Attach your social media platform accounts to each other for ease of being discovered. Attach all this information and your contact information to your website. Start a weekly or monthly newsletter. And all platforms only are as useful as they are visible. To be visible, you must be active, actively uploading regular content. Again, consistency is key. Best advice, study SEO and algorithms. Position a constant and consistent day, time for upload. Have an enticing, optimized title and description. Never be lazy. You'll be better off not trying. This way your videos will be more likely to show up in other people's recommendations. Step 5. Build a website as your hub. Securing your personalized domain name. On a website you can host your blog and newsletter, podcasts, videos, media features, list of all publications, novels and upcoming novels, bestsellers, book reviews, stories, of fa stories available and links direct even sell your book directly and then that way you don't have to share a percentage and it's good to have a place ready to sign and functional so that when people start to google you you already look like a professional people overall connect really well with those who are very honest and candid about their experiences the good and the bad give them a human sense of who you are bring personality be open about your frustrations and challenges and how you're trying to overcome them. 
and if those efforts were futile or not. Don't make everything appear too picture perfect. It can give people a false sense of reality, especially younger people. Potentially, others of who are smarter and know that life isn't always so perfect it can put them off altogether. My best advice: be rustic, spontaneous, a diamond in the rough. When you give the visual and feel of being too perfect, people might struggle being able to emotionally connect with you. Same with don't overshare. Be professional while remaining personable. Make your audience feel like friends, so others don't get the sense that you hold yourself superior. Always be honest, down to earth, and above all, sincere. Step six: brand. Try to build a theme around who you are as a writer, while implementing a personal feel of what encapsulates you as a person. Use a constant profile picture so people can recognize you easily across different platforms. And consistent usernames where possible. Link each social media to the other by providing links in the description boxes, as well as any stores your book is being sold in, and potentially any book signings or other events, including a direct link to where you can sell your books directly from your website. Step seven: Listen to your audience. Over time, as they grow and get to know you, they'll start to get feedback, and use that to incorporate others to join in and commence an open, fun, and educational conversation where everyone can learn something new and exciting from one another. Be considerate. Ask people what kind of content they would like to see from you. Offer them suggestions. Something as simple like a day trip or a day in the life, day or weekly vlog of your home or your work life. Recipes you're currently trying and loving. If you're doing a photo shoot, even just for updated pictures for your social media, include them in the behind-the-scenes recorded footage for doing hair and makeup. It's simple. Equally, be quick to get off any wrong and negative people who might attack you or your audience. It happens, Sally, but you must be quick to purge. Most people won't take it out on you if one of your followers abused them in some way, but some can. I've been there, and then you've lost a follower, a fan, a customer, above all, a potential friend. I hope this has helped, and it's just a little brief summary of all the little things that you can start doing today and incorporating into your daily life. So until next time, I'm Grace Vandenberg.